Come on, somebody. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Watching and waiting. Look from above. This is our day. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. If the Lord is good to you, let's go ahead and tell him thank you. Go ahead and tell him thank you. We thank you, God, even right now for last night's sleep and the early morning rise. Go ahead and tell them thank you. We thank you that no burglar broke in and no fire broke out. Go ahead and tell them thank you. We thank you, God, that you allow us to see grace and mercy just one more time. Go ahead and tell the Lord thank you. We thank you, Lord, for another day of grace and of mercy. I'm not going to be before you long, but I believe the Lord has something to say to us this morning All right. from the Gospel of Timothy. First Timothy, the first chapter. It's rather lengthy, and so I'm going to let the Word preach what God has to say to us this morning. First Timothy. Chapter 1, starting at verse 12. And I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has enabled me because he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. Although I was formerly a blasphemer, persecutor, an insolent man, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief and the grace of our Lord was exceedingly abundant with faith and love which are in Christ Jesus this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Yeah. However, for this reason, I've obtained mercy that in me first, Jesus Christ might show all long suffering as a pattern to those who are going to believe on him for everlasting life. Verse 17 really is a song that says, now to the King eternal, immortal, invisible to God who alone is wise be honor and glory forever and ever amen amen somebody this is the word of God for the people of God for the few minutes that are mine I like to speak from the sermonic theme what the Lord has done for me yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I want to talk about this morning. What, right. what, what, what the Lord has done for me. Let us pray. Father God, even right now we know that you're God and there's no God beside you. And we say thank you. We thank you, God, that you didn't have to do it, but you did it. You died on Calvary that we might have a right to eternal life. And we say thank you. Set worn down that you might be glorified and magnified. And after all is said and done, let somebody be touched, healed, set free, and delivered by your word. This is your servant's prayer. Amen, somebody. Amen. This is what the Lord has done for me. At the time of this particular writing, Paul had spent almost three years establishing the church at Ephesus. For three years he spent preaching and teaching. But God has called him to move on to establish another church or various churches. John Wesley teaches that the itinerant system in which we have in Methodism is patterned after the Apostle Paul who went to Asia Minor by himself 
by the power of the Holy Ghost and the power of God to establish churches where Jesus did not go. All right. Paul, who was rejected by the disciples of the Lord. Paul, who was, who sat at the foot of Gamaliel, uh, the, uh, at that day, the first, the, the, the first cynical scholar of that day. Paul sat at his feet. He was a Pharisee. He was a devout Jew. And as a devout Jew, Paul thought what he was doing was right by persecuting the church. And history tells us, biblical history tells us, that one day he was on his road, he was on his way yes. to the road called Damascus. Yes. Yes. There a light shined on. Mm. Knocked Paul off his horse. <laughs> and when he knocked him off his horse, he heard a voice. And that voice said, Paul, Paul, why are you persecuting me? Mm -hmm. And Paul says, who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I'm Jesus whom you persecute. Mm -hmm. And God sent him on a street called Straight where he meets a deacon by the name of Adonias. And he tells Adonias, Adonias, there's one Paul of Tarsus who's praying. I want you to pray. Mm. And this deacon, devoted, devoted church member, responds to God and says, I have heard of this man, Paul of Tarsus, mm -hmm. who have caused mischief and have wrecked the church. And you want me to pray for him? And I believe God says, shut your big mouth. I know what you don't know. I made the sun, moon, and stars. All right. I made the heavens. I bring darkness out of, out of light and light out of darkness. I can save a sinner like Paul. Pray for him because he's going to have to suffer for my name's sake. Paul then, obedient to our Lord and Savior, goes to Arabia for almost 40 years and studies. He comes back to the disciples and he says to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And the disciples of Jesus said, we don't believe you, Paul. We don't trust you. We remember what you was, but we don't, we don't remember what God has done in your life. And that motivated the apostle Paul to leave that group of men and to go up to Asia Minor among the Gentile generations where they did not know Christ. And there he would go to Pontus, lifting up the name of Jesus. There he would go to uh, 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 Lystrum. And there he would go to uh, Thessalonica. There he would go to Corinth. He would go to all these cities, lifting up the name of Jesus. And he comes to a place called Ephesus. Where he speaks to the Ephesians. He's teaching the Ephesians. He's preaching to the Ephesians. And now God has called him to move on. And he leaves the church in the capable hands of a young preacher by the name of Timothy. But Timothy is distraught, Brother Durham, because this is, this is Timothy's first pastorate. This is his first appointment. The people are wicked. The people are evil. The people are recalcitrant. The people are hard-headed, stiff-necked. The people are not nice to him. Yeah. So he writes a letter to Paul, who's incarcerated. And Paul writes a letter back to him in encouragement. And Paul, in these words, says, I thank Christ, our Lord, who has enabled me because he counted me faithful, putting me into 
the ministry. Mm. While he's in prison writing this young man who is inundated with a church that he really can't control, a church that 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 despises his youth because in the Greco-Roman world, the Greco-Romans didn't believe you were a man until you hit 40. Timothy is 30 years old. But Paul says, stop the gifts, I see it in you. I know you come from good stock. I know your mama Lois. I know your grandmama Lois and your mother Eunice. I know them and I know that you was raised right and you were raised in the word of God. Don't let folk take you away from your calling in Christ Jesus. But I want to look at something, this first point I want to look at. I want to look at the fact that Paul is incarcerated somewhere else. And he, he receives a letter from Timothy who's not incarcerated but is going through a situation. And yet Paul puts his situation aside to help this young man out. I stopped by this morning to tell somebody while we are sitting in Sharp Street. And all of us may have personal issues, although we're dressed up, smelling good, looking good. There is somebody sitting next to us that may have an issue worse than yours. Yeah, yeah. That by God's permission, it should move you then to give your testimony to them of how the Lord has brought you through. Yeah. And this is what Paul is saying. I'm going to tell you, Timothy what the Lord has done for me. Yeah. He writes, he writes, he writes, although I formerly yeah. was a blasphemer, persecutor, and an insolent man, I did this in ignorance. Paul is testifying, he's testifying to Timothy what the Lord has done for them. He's testifying that one time I was a sinner. In need of salvation and I don't know about you but all of us in here one time or another amen somebody were in need of salvation now I'm not that presumptuous or I'm not that arrogant to even think you know that everybody has been to jail everybody has been on drugs everybody has been through some of the things that myself and some of my homeboys been through in the street Amen, somebody. Amen. But the witness is, and the testimony that you should have is, it's not that the Lord brought you from hardship, yeah. but the Lord kept, good God Almighty, the Lord kept you from yeah. some things that other folk, come on, somebody, and you ought to be the ones that thanking God more than those of us that God brought out of the situation because he kept you. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, somebody. My grandma would say, all night. All day, angels watching after me, my Lord. Yeah. If it had not been for the Lord, come on somebody, if you would be honest, if it had not been for the Lord on your side, my side, where? Yes. Where would I be? Where would we? Yes. Where would we be? Paul, Paul, he testifies as a sinner, but then he says, he says, although... He says, he says, verse 14, and the grace of our Lord was exceedingly abundant with faith and love which are in Christ Jesus. That is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I'm chief. Paul is saying, not only was I a sinner, but I became a saint when I confessed the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, somebody. And I remember one time, uh, years ago, I was, a, I was a little, I was a little lad, and, and uh, I was around about 12, 13, and, and uh, I went to surprise uh, my grandmother in church, and, um, and, and there were some ushers in the back of the church who did not let me sit down. I'll never forget it to this day. And um, 
pews like this. Long pews. Enough to sit 10 people on the pew. But these ladies had a hat, a Bible, and a bag on this pew. And I looked at the pew and I said, well, there's some room for me to sit down. And when I went to sit down, an usher touched my hand and said, somebody is sitting here. And I got up and I left the church. I went to my grandmother's house because she did not show that day. And uh, I came in the house and I said, Granny, I went to church today. And all you could hear was pots clanging. She had dropped the plots and she began to praise God in the kitchen. She began to lift up his name. My hard-headed grandson then went to church and I wasn't there. And when she came out of the kitchen and we sat in the dining room, I said, Granny, I'm not going back to your church no more. I said, because first of all, the lady wouldn't let me sit down. And secondly, when I did find a seat, the lady whispered because my mother was an addict. She was an addict. She was in active addiction at that time. The lady talked about us like dogs. She said, yeah, that's, that's so-and-so's, that's pastor mother. She's the one that's on drugs and alcohol. And I said to myself, what does that have to do with salvation? Yeah. In the house of God. That's right. My grandmother fought to get me in church. My mother had took us out of church. Yeah. Because of her decision as a mother to take us far away from the church. I'm still seeking church, but my mother took me away from church through her sickness of her addiction. I come in the church trying to receive some kind of comfort and enlightenment and, and, and care and excitement just to be met with. And my grandmother said, who was that usher that said that? And I, she said, give me the description of her. And I said, granny, it was so-and-so and so-and-so. I don't want to say a name because it might be one of y'all cousins. But she said, uh, so my grandmother said, wait a minute. Her husband is a drunk. Her son is locked up. And I know she ain't got no business talking about nobody else. And she took and said to me, she said, well, let me tell you something. Every sinner has a past. Amen. But every, good God Almighty, every saint has a past and every sinner has a future in Christ Jesus. Right. Don't let what people say destroy your heart, destroy your desire to know the Lord. Paul is locked up. He gets a letter from Timothy. Timothy is complaining about all the mistreatment he's receiving from the church. And Paul says, let me tell you what the Lord has done for me. I was a sinner. I called on the Lord. I became a saint. But not only that, he says, he says, however, he says, for this reason, I've obtained mercy that in me first, Jesus Christ might show all long suffering as a pattern. Here it is. As a pattern to those who are going to believe on him for everlasting life. Mm -hmm. A pattern. Yeah. Paul's testimony here in 1 Timothy 1 is he's talking about him being a sinner. Then he's talking about being a saint. But then he's talking about being a servant. He's God saying, he, he's saying that God has used him as a pattern for his will and his work. And I got to be honest this morning, I didn't call myself to the ministry. I didn't call myself to the ministry. I had a praying grandmother who prayed for me and my brothers and sisters. That, 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 that when they left me, what we were raised in Shaw Street. My mother and my grandmother, they were, they, they, they had a love hate affair, a contentious affair because of the fact that my mother, my grandmother did not understand what addiction was. 
They didn't have recovery houses like they have now. Right. Amen. Amen. So most of our families, we either prayed or we just shunned our family members. Mm -hmm. Or they could come to the door, give them a sandwich, and send them on their way. Or my grandmother would say, come on in here, take a shower, get yourself some clothes, and you're out of here. We don't want to be honest about that, but that's what happened in these families before recovery. Amen, somebody. Amen. And when my, every time my mother got clean, she got clean almost 20 times. And every time she got clean, she came to my grandmother and said, give me my children back. My grandmother fighting her, fighting her tears back and fighting for uh, me and my twin sister and she would say in the stand in the doorway and say you know what you don't mean these children no good all you want is a check you don't mean these children no good let us keep them my granddaddy and my grandmama let us have warning let us have Wanda why you go and destroy your life or go do what you gotta do but because of social service the law says they had to give the children back. Right, right. But Granny ain't give up. Granny still prayed. And the further we went away from Sharp Street, the further we went away from church, the further we went away from Bible study, the further we went away, the longer I longed to love to know the Lord. My God. Yeah. The longer I longed to live with my grandmother, the, the long. This was my sanctuary. This was my peace. This was my place where I got a meal. This was my place where I got a hug. This was my place because where we lived was death and darkness and 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 hatred and and and, and disorder. Yeah. This is where. This is where. Our foundation was this was my safe place yeah. right here and she fought for me and all of her life she fought for me mm. and she gave me her testimony and I stopped by this morning to tell somebody that this text this morning is Paul's testimony of what the Lord has done for him but I want you to I want you to think about what the Lord has done for you. Yeah. Amen, somebody. Amen. I want you to think about right now what the Lord has done for you. The reason why we're in church, the reason why we're lifting up the name of Jesus, because the Lord, come on, somebody, has brought us a mighty long way. Yeah. The Lord has blessed us when we couldn't bless ourselves. The Lord has helped us when we couldn't help ourselves. The Lord has made a way out of no way. The Lord has been a friend. Amen, somebody. The Lord has been a bridge over troubled water. Amen, somebody. This is the testimony. And the truth of the matter is, every one of you in here right now, the reason why you have a testimony is because you passed the test. And some of us still have a test to go through. But for those of us who God has brought through, who, who was on that sick bed and almost died and God brought you back. You got a testimony to tell somebody he's a doctor in the sick room. Yeah. Come on, somebody. For those of us who work two jobs and work to keep a family together and yet our sons and daughters still got in trouble and yet they wind up with probation. They didn't go to jail. And the Lord has been a lawyer in the courtroom. Amen, somebody. What has the Lord done for you if I was to think about those in scripture that the Lord had done something for come here lady with the wish of blood she has spent all her money with all kinds of doctors wind up divorced lost her home one day she was in the city of Jerusalem and she heard of a man named Jesus crowd all around her mm -hmm. and she said if I could just touch right. yeah. the hem of his garment I'll be made whole yeah. and she not only said it she went into the crowd and 
pushed through the crowd and, and she touched the hem of his garment. And, and Jesus said, who touched me? And Peter said, Lord, I don't know all these people around you. I don't know who touched you. He said, but whoever touched me, virtue came out of her. Yeah. And when, he, when she touched him, he touched her and healed her. Yeah. And if I could bring her to the mic right now, I could hear the one with the issue of blood saying, what the Lord has done for me. Yeah. Come here, Lazarus. Lazarus was sick unto death. Martha, Mary, and Martha sent word to, to, to Jesus. Listen, the one you love yeah. is dying. Yeah. And yet Jesus let him go ahead and die. Yeah. By the time he came to Bethany in the house uh, where Jesus was, I mean where Lazarus was and his sisters was, the sisters came outside. One of them was angry with him and said, if you were here, yeah. my brother wouldn't have died. And Jesus said to her, you'll see your brother again. She says to him in the resurrection. And he looked at her and said, I am. You ain't hear what I said. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. Amen, somebody. Show me where you laid him. Now stop by to tell somebody this morning when he asked that question. He asked the question to the sisters. Show me where you laid your brother. Now, this is God Almighty that knows all things, sees all things, and know all things. Why would God ask the sisters, where did you lay your brother? The answer is, as long as you are currying, as long as you are currying issues, and you don't lay it down, God ain't going to pick it up. You're still, you're still crying issues and problems, but you won't give it to the Lord. He said, where did you lay him? And he went in the, in the tomb and he called forth him, Lazarus, and he called him forth. And Lazarus came forth. And I believe if Lazarus was at the mic this morning, he would say, look what the Lord has done for me. I had to go do that. There are some, there in the Old Testament, there are some individuals of whom God has done some things for. If I went down to the Red Sea ah, and talked to Moses, Moses standing at the Red Sea, the Sinai on one side, the wilderness on the other, the Red Sea is in front of him, and Pharaoh soldiers at the back. The Sinai is on one side, the Red Sea is on the other. Pharaoh's soldiers is at the back and he's standing there uh, waiting for a sign from God and God says to Moses stand still yeah. mm. and see the salvation of the Lord yes, sir. raise up your staff and the Bible says that, is, that the, red, the Red Sea parted yeah. amen somebody now the children of Israel will go forth and then swallow the Pharaoh's soldiers. If he came to the mic this morning, I believe he'll say, look what the Lord has done for me. Amen, somebody. Come here, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I know what the king says about you uh, accepting that God and bowing down, but because you didn't bow down, war was given to send them and throw them in the fiery furnace. To the point where uh, the king got up and went down into the dungeon and looked in at himself. And the Bible said that he saw three men and one walking around in the fire looking like Christ. And I just believe, good God Almighty, if in fact they were at the mic this morning. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego would say, look what the Lord has done for me. And I don't know what I'm talking to you this morning, but if the Lord has done something for you this morning, won't you just go ahead and tell him thank you? Won't you go ahead and tell him thank you for being all that he's been? For some, he's been a brother in a sick room. For some, he's been a lawyer in a courtroom. For some, he's been bread when you're hungry. For some, you've been water when you're thirsty. For some, good God Almighty, he's been an answer to a question and I don't know what I'm talking to but if the Lord has done something for you this morning go ahead and tell him thank you amen somebody 
I know he done something for me. You know why I know he done something for me? Because he woke me up this morning. He started me on my way. Listen, if he don't do nothing else, he already done blessed me enough. Yeah. Hey Amen, somebody. He woke, come on, somebody. Somebody's name was called this morning, but they called. Somebody's name was called this morning, but they couldn't call back. But here you are. Here you are in the house of the Lord. Your testimony is your experience of what the Lord has done for you. But it's not just for you, but it's for that person sitting next to you that's going through. And you have a responsibility and a right. Amen. Amen. Don't care all you're going through. That young lady is struggling with them kids. There's a single mother in here who've made it, who can sit next to her and say, you know, I've been through the same thing. Amen, somebody. That might lift her day, make her day and lift her load. Amen, somebody. The testimony is to show that God is God. That God is real. That God can make a way out of no way. That God can do what no man can do. Amen, somebody. Amen. If he did it for me, amen, somebody, he can do it for you. That's what the Lord has done. I've been a Muslim. I've been in the street. Oh, God. I've been shot left for dead. But I call on the name of Jesus. Yeah. And when I call on his name, he saved my life. And when he saved my life, I said, Lord, if you spare my life, I give it to you. And I've been running for the Lord ever since. And that's been almost 30 years now. Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. But Paul says, tell folk. Tell them what you've been through. You know, when we go out here and give out food, and I'm, I'm, I'm closing. When we give out food, we give out clothes, and we minister to those on the corner of Dolphin and Eden, there are some people that I was incarcerated with as a young man. There are some people I know that was on the corner when I was selling drugs as a young man. And guess what? They look at me and can't believe yeah. that God, mm -hmm. that God can make a way out of nowhere. That God can save. That God can heal. That God can deliver. I'm a witness. He can. So when I see him, I don't shun. I hug him. I joke with him. I was standing next to him in on a Sunday in, 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 in Latonia. I told one of my homeboys, man, you're going to have to put some, put some lotion on them ashy legs when you come up in here next Sunday. But I can joke with him like that. Because I grew up with him like that. But, but, but I, what I'm saying is, I know better, no bigger than anybody else. I'm a sinner saved by grace, Amen. trying to do the will of the Father. Yeah. The mighty consoler says, I'm a nobody, trying to tell everybody about this somebody who can save. Yeah. Come on, somebody, anybody. Did he save you? Yeah. Can he save you? Amen, yeah, somebody. Stand on your feet all over the church and thank God right now for what he's done for you. And don't be ashamed to tell nobody what the Lord has done for you. That is the evidence. Amen, yeah, somebody. That is the evidence Amen. that he can save, that he can heal, that he can deliver. Either God is a deliverer or he's not. Yeah. He's a healer or he's not. Amen, yeah. yeah, somebody. You can't come in church and stay the same way you were. Amen, somebody. Amen. You have to be transformed yeah. by the renewing of your mind. Yeah. Amen, somebody. That's Bible. Amen, somebody. Right. Old folks said like this, the places I used to go, I don't go no more. Right. The things I used to do, I don't do no more. When I met Jesus. Yeah. Amen, somebody. Paul is sitting in a jail. And he's testifying to Timothy of what he had gone through to give him encouragement. 
not knowing in a few hours, Paul is going to the shopping block. If you're going to witness and testify to somebody, you can't, that individual who's that delicate, you can't, you can't bear upon them your issues. You got to keep yours and give it to the Lord. You're trying to help that one from jumping off the cliff. Yeah. Amen, somebody. Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. Have a certain sensitivity. Because the truth of the matter is, all of us weren't raised the same way. All right. Some of y'all were blessed better than others. Yeah. You know, when I was in grad school, Miss Millie Rice, it's good to see Miss Millie Rice. God bless you this morning. She's a big figure in the United Methodist. I know she's close to Miss Sir and a few others. Amen, somebody. When I was coming through under Dr. Alfreda Wiggins and Dr. Patricia Johnson, uh, Ms. Dr. Rice, or almost, she almost Dr. Rice, uh, if not Dr. Rice, she... Um, she helped me along in ministry. In ministry. She made me forget my train of thought. <laughs> Amen, somebody. It's good to see your face. But the fact that, that I'm here as a witness, that God can. Amen, somebody. Amen. That God can do anything but fail. Yeah. Amen, somebody. Amen. Father God, even right now, we thank you, thank you. for those who have come before us who have had a witness, who have had a wisdom and a witness to guide us, to, to help us not make the mistakes that they made. Yeah. Amen. Amen. To better us in this walk of a Christian life. And for that, we thank you. We thank you, God, right now for each and every one that came out today, who we thank God that they passed the test. And because they passed the test, they have a testimony yes. to tell to a dying world yes. that Jesus can yes. save, yes. set free, yes. and deliver yes. in his name. Amen. 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 Amen, somebody. Come on. Amen. Let the church say it. Yeah.